So let's now have a look at body temperature detection. Why is body temperature detection in the news? It never was before. Why now? Now, the answer to that, of course, you know, is all COVID-19. Before COVID-19, as security professionals, typically we used to focus our efforts on fire suppression control. We focused our efforts on intrusion, burglar alarms, surveillance cameras, access control projects, whether it's lock and key, card access, or biometrics. These are the things normally that used to gravitate to. These are the things uh, that we focused our energies on. But of course, things have changed now today with the whole advent of COVID-19. It's in the news, it's on television constantly. Notice with President Trump, we have um, opening up America. See, that's what it's all about now. Now it's no longer about security. It's about how do we reopen America? Yes, fire suppression is important, surveillance is important. All these things continue to be important, but they're no longer front and center stage. Now the key is how do we reopen America? And how do we reinstill confidence? in the government so that they become more lax in their shutdown rules? How do we reinstill confidence in the employees so they feel comfortable coming back to work? And how do we reinstill confidence in the customers, our paying customers, where we count on for revenue? So it's not about security anymore. It's about reopening business. And if you adopt this mindset, as salespeople on the phone, all your customers want to have this conversation. This is what they're most mindful of. They're not worried about locking the door or installing an intrusion camera in the back of their uh, office. They want to know, how do we reinstill a confidence to bring customers back? And what we found is body temperature. Now, none of us can actually prevent the spread of a virus. And uh, I, 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 I need to bring everyone's attention, even though the FDA right now has softened up its, uh, its position, anyone who's claiming to prevent virus to prevent COVID-19, anyone who's making any health claims also needs to have FDA certification to back their claim up. So I, I encourage you all, do not work with vendors who claim to prevent virus spread because in the event that the FDA now starts policing this, and they should restart in about six months, you're going to be on their target list. And God forbid if someone dies from COVID-19 and their lawyer finds out that there was a, a COVID-19 body to temperature detection prevention device installed, they are going to be wide open to lawsuits. You do not want to install any products that have any medical claims without FDA approval. And this is not an FDA device. So do not work with any company claiming to prevent the spread of COVID-19. You're, you're really, it's going to be a tremendous liability. You're going to be a risk at. So, we're not, we can't stop COVID-19. We can't prevent the spread. However, we can detect body temperature. Elevated body temperature is a great way to know somebody is sick. So how are customers now implementing technology to do that? Well, people are normally associated with surveillance cameras with body temperature detection. All the big camera makers that you all know are adding thermal sensors to their cameras and now claim that they detect um, body temperature. And how does it work? Most of you know about surveillance. A person walks in, their surveillance camera sees them, and now because it has a thermal sensor, it's now reading their body temperature. However, with any surveillance solution, you also need to install a black body so that you can calibrate the room temperature. So if you're implementing a surveillance camera-based uh, body temperature detection system, these are all the components you need you may not be aware of. You need the thermal camera, you need the black body for calibration, then, of course, you need some type of video network recorder because that camera is going to be streaming that live video. And then, of course, you need a monitoring station where you're now looking for elevated body temperature. Most likely, you've got uh, monitoring security personnel looking at those feeds. And then, once you're alerted that someone has received uh, or someone has an elevated body temperature, you now then need to take action to do what to do with that person with elevated body temperature. So if you can imagine a sports stadium where you have 25, 30,000 fans and you're using a surveillance-based body temperature detection system from a camera company you trust, well, what happens when that camera does pick somebody up? Are you going to then dispatch a security guard and chase down that person with the temperature and possibly tackle them to the ground? Uh, now, of course, this slide here is, is for humor. But if you really think about it, as an end user, what are you going to do once you find someone that's already inside your restaurant 
with an elevated body temperature. Your surveillance camera did its job. It picked them out. But meanwhile, they're already in the crowd. They're already sitting down. Then what? You're going to dispatch someone from your security detail to approach that person and then remove them from the restaurant? That's a surveillance type solution. And that's why surveillance cameras are not an answer to addressing, uh, preventing people from high body temperature and making your premise. It's not a surveillance type of response. Plus, these surveillance solutions are very, very expensive. They're easily over fifteen, twenty thousand dollars because of all those pieces that you need. And normally, there's even a recurring fee for the uh, analytics software that you're utilizing. So that's why you want to use a standalone access control type solution because the whole idea behind this is to prevent people that have high body temperature from accessing the premise. You don't want to find out afterwards and then pick them out of the crowd and remove them. You want to prevent them from entering the premise. That's why in this slide you'll see the person who's before a turnstile that has a body temperature detection reader on the turnstile. And that can be configured to deny access to that person if they have an elevated body temperature. Or perhaps you want to let them go through, but at least you want to send out some type of alert mechanism. Maybe you want to trigger a light or an alarm or send off an email. So you have all these different options. But you need to have some type of standalone device that's got relay uh, output so that you can control what happens when you detect that person. There's no, re there's no need for a thermal camera. There's no need for a black body. There's no need for a video recorder with facial recognition and analytics software. There's no need for a monitoring station. There's no need for security guards. And there's no need to pay a recurring revenue fee. This is a clear example that you want to look at access control standalone devices when you're looking at body temperature detection. So now we get into what does ZK Techo offer? We have four readers now that incorporate our new visible light recognition technology, and then two of the four which have body temperature detection. The two models on the left, those are our eight-inch displays. The one on the left, our SF1008WP. That is an award-winning outdoor rated face recognition reader. Granted, it does not have body temperature detection, but now we have very powerful outdoor face readers for access control. And then, of course, the SF1008 Plus, takes all that technology, that face recognition capability, and we've added a thermal sensor, and SMI will be demonstrating that for you in a moment. And then we also have a five-inch version of that, which is a little bit smaller, therefore a little bit less expensive. So let's now have a, a look at one of a 30-second video of how the technology works. You're going to see various people approaching a turnstile. They even have face masks. And as long as their face or their palm is recognized, and they have the uh, access rights necessary, that turnstile releases. So right now it's acting as a normal access control solution. However, now it's also turned on the body temperature detection, which acts as an override. Even with access rights, if the person has an elevated body temperature or if they're not wearing a mask, that device can deny them access. So now we've actually added body temperature detection and the mask as an additional credential. The device that Estabot is going to be demonstrating is our SF1008 Plus, and that is a patent pending technology. Typically, it's used for access control type of, um, applications as well as time attendance or any other application where you require user authentication. It has an 8 inch touchscreen display. It also supports up to 50,000 faces as well as 5,000 palms. As mentioned now, you'll notice there's a thermal camera on the top of the device. So now you've got body temperature detection, and we also have mass detection. This is a, because it's among our visible light series, it operates in both total darkness, because it has an infrared light, as well as complete bright sunlight, up to 50,000 lux. It's got very different communications. It's got TCP IP. So you can have it running with our software, any third-party software. It has vegan output, so you can connect it with any third-party panel incorporated to your access control system. It also has relay contacts. You can also connect it to a door or a light That'll or an alarm. That. And with any face recognition solution, it also has a very powerful anti-spoofing engine, uh, so it can sustain um, against uh, fake uh, photo attacks. Okay. So with that said, Esteban now is going to provide you a live demo of how the reader works. And I have no doubt you're going to be impressed with its accuracy and its uh, speed of matching. Thank you, everybody.
And thank you, Larry, for that. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'll be demonstrating this actual reader right here that you're able to see. Just give me one second. Make sure I can get this up on the screen. Ah, there we go. And here is our SF1008 Plus in action. So right now the way I have this set up is to identify face, palm, or body temperature all at once. So there's different settings that you can do on this reader. Right now I have it set for my temperature threshold. My temperature threshold to be 100.4, which is what's considered a fever here in the US. So let me just move this a little closer so we can see it better. Uh, please, can everybody just please make sure they're muting their phones uh, or muting their PCs as well while we're going over this? Thank you. So right now I have it set up for 100.4 degrees is my temperature threshold. So I'll just simply come up to the reader. Oh, sorry, it's, I had it in a previous version. So now we can do this. So now I have it currently set up for 100.4 degrees. It'll measure my temperature. Based on my temperature being underneath the threshold, it will allow me access. So when it does this, it will also we we'll also close the out the uh, our lock output closure. So if you have a lock connected to this, it'll open the lock. Or if you want to, just for visual purposes, you can uh, wire a green LED just so you can see it's green means go, and that person is underneath the threshold. So next, I'll demonstrate what I can do with the palm. So as you can see, it verifies my palm. Then ask for my temperature measurement. And with it being underneath the threshold, it will grant me access and open our uh, lock output. So now what I'll do is I'm going to set this for a lower threshold that I know will alarm it. So I can show you what would happen if a person comes in with a high temperature. So present my face. It, it alarms on the reader because my temperature is above the threshold. It denies me access. And then also it activates our alarm output, which I've connected to a red LED. This is great if you have someone in the vicinity and someone comes in with a higher elevated temperature and you have a security guard or someone monitoring, they can visually see that someone has come in with this red LED through the alarm output. So what I'll do now is I'll clear that external alarm and we'll walk through a little bit, a few of the features here. So this is our high temperature alarm threshold. So what I'll do is it was at 95. I'll set it back to the normal 100.4. At any point, you can disable the temperature screening as well here. And you can decide whether if the person is over the range, whether they're access denied or not. So here we can set our temperature units for Fahrenheit and centigrade. So this can be uh, utilized throughout the world. We also have our temper measurement distance. Our farthest currently that the temperature screen, screening can pick up is 18 inches away. So that's the farthest the person can be away from the reader while getting an accurate uh, reading. So we also have close and near, which can do much shorter distances like 12 to 13 inches and 9 to 10 inches. But that's really all depending on the installation and how you want to uh, set up and have people be able to, how close you want people to be able to get to the reader. So another thing this has is temperature calibration. So this is not an outdoor reader, it is not outdoor rated, and we also suggest uh, that you do not actually install this outdoors because of the environmental uh, ranges in, in temperature that occur throughout the day. Uh, and also if there's any type of rain or snow or anything that does get it, uh, this is not outdoor rated for that and it could cause damage to the reader. So installing this indoors is ideal and what you can do is actually calibrate the temperature of the soft of the reader. So if you know your room's temperature, you can just simply come into here like I have. Right now my rent room temperature is 75 degrees. I can come in. I can calibrate it to that. And then once my reader is done calibrating, it will start working in that area of temperature. What you can also do is you have temperature deviation correction. So at different points throughout the day, that room may get cooler. It may get warmer such as in the morning, usually it's a little cooler. Then throughout the day, as the sun comes out, uh, it starts to get a warm, little warmer. What you can do is actually just 
uh, manually deviate to be one degree below, one degree above, and coming soon you'll also be able to put this on a time schedule. So if you already know from 9 to 11 it's a little cooler, you can have it set to be at one degree over. And then during the midday when the sun's out, coming through if you have glass and you have windows coming in your office, and it tends to warm up, you can put it on a schedule to be underneath that threshold. And the same thing throughout the rest of the day. So another great feature this has is mask detection. And someone has decided to make themselves the presenter again. So let's change that. Okay, so now back where I was, so you can also enable mass detection on this. So this is, as most of you know, throughout the world, especially in the United States now, and especially in the Northeast, uh, it's been mandatory that anyone going out does wear masks. And this has already been in place for those working in uh, food processing plants, uh, restaurant workers in the kitchen. Also, if you have any type of manufacturing where workers come in contact with consumer products that you don't want any type of uh, uh, spread or anything like that, so they would already be coming in with masks. So this has mask detection on it, so I'm just going to throw on my mask right now. It is an N95 mask, if those of you are wondering. I would just come up to the reader, present myself. It will detect my mask, and also based on my temperature, it will grant me access. So now I can demonstrate what would happen if I show up without my mask. So you can see it says without mask. Even though my temperature is below the threshold, I'm not following protocol by wearing my mask, so it's not going to allow me access, and it's also going to set the alarm output. So now I'll just put my mask back on. I'll come in. That deactivates my alarm, and I'm good to go. And I can go back to work now. So as Larry mentioned before in our slideshow presentation, we did have uh, previous versions of this that did not have uh, temperature screening. So this is just a quick example of the speed and accuracy of these readers if you were to use our non-temperature uh, version of these. So I'm just bring up my palm, and just like that, that quickly. Same with my face, that quickly. And without the temperature sensor uh, being used, you can read faces from up to 8 to 10 feet away. So, so I'm just going to set this back to our temperature uh, settings so we can continue on with the demo. So now what I'd like to show is our integration with our biosecurity software that we have. When I come here, you can see our temperature detection management. Uh, please excuse some of the pictures. They're not always great. I don't, they're not always flattering towards me. But here you can see my real-time monitoring. I can get my normal records of whenever I punched in. You can get a visual confirmation. And also another question that's asked a lot is, is this only for registered people? So do they have to be registered in the software or register, have their face registered on the reader? No. This also does have the function that will allow anyone to walk up to the reader, have the temperature measured, and then based on whether it's over the threshold or below, it would alarm the output or open the lock output. That would be completely up to your using. And then also you can have the ability to take pictures of those, to have to take a screenshot of those people as they enter when they have high fever or at any time. So that way you can have a visual record. This is great for any type of auditing, reporting, and whatnot. So as far as this reporting, we can do a couple more things here. So you are able to also see a statistics panel here. So you can get your normal temperature, your statistics here. You can get a temperature raw record. So this is a raw temperature record of everybody that's walked in through this building and had the temperature taken, whether you're registered or unregistered, as you can see. So another feature here is personnel temperature record. So here, for anyone that's enrolled in the software and that you can see, here you can also have it set. So you can see that person's actual temperature every time they checked in on the, during that day. So here's my check-ins from this morning, and here's my check-ins from, from yesterday. As you can see, I have a full accurate uh, reporting of all my temperatures. 
So we also have an abnormal temperature record. This is for anyone that's above the threshold. So you can get that raw data here. And you can even check by department. So if you have a group of people that are working closely together in one department and you see the temperatures start to trend upwards, you can monitor that as well. Then another thing you saw is everything I did programming-wise on the reader when it came to the temperature management setting can also be done on the software itself. So here I can set my temperature threshold for the software itself. And then also I can come here into our access and I can also set up our device to be able to manually do our temperature and mass detection parameters here. So I can enable it from the software. I can deny access from the software here if they're over the range. I can set my threshold here for the reader. I can do my deviation as well, change my units. I can decide whether they need to wear masks if I want to allow unregistered people and also ex trigger my external alarm. So another thing this does have the feature for is reporting outside of the software and at the reader. So if someone is coming in with a high temperature, you can also have this send out an email alert. And it's not just for high temperature, you can also have them, if they're not wearing their mask, that can also send out an email, an email alert to our linkages. So just like any other linkages or email alerts that we have, you can also set one for temperature as well as the not wearing a mask. So now what I'm gonna do is now that we've gone through the visual demo, is what I'm going to do now is, if I can get this up, is show you what's next. So as you saw our live demo, you're probably wondering what's next with ZK Tyco USA, and I can give. And I'll just gladly hand that back to Larry. Yeah, so as mentioned, um, so these speed space readers, these are the first of several other products that are incorporating uh, body temperature detection. As I also mentioned, we have other um, products that we're also introducing based on the application. So the next product you're going to see us introduce is on these days kiosks with a 13-inch screen, and it comes with and without body temperature detection. And this we're seeing uh, is more often now is as people enter a complex, perhaps a, um, a conference hall, you want the people to sign up perhaps or maybe uh, register with, their, with a visitor management application. So these kiosks now becoming more, uh, more prevalent and having the ability to detect the someone's body temperature, um, elevated body temperature before they enter is, is critical. So in this case, our new face kiosk uh, 13 inch as a 13-inch screen display, it supports up to 10,000 faces. But in addition, you'll see it also incorporates QR code, barcodes, uh, also a receipt printer. So this is now designed for visitor management and event management applications. You're going to see this uh, you know, more and more common. So in addition to the face cast reader, we also have other products. Getting a lot of attention now are our walkthrough metal detectors. In the event that you're doing you know, typical scans for metal, why not also incorporate body temperature detection? So um, this is being very, very uh, well received, especially by schools. Not sure if whoever on the phone works with schools, but with schools, you have a few challenges. Of course, you have the, uh, unfortunately, the mass shooting, so there's always a concern for bringing in concealed uh, weapons into the school. However, you also now have an epidemic of uh, underage vaping where vaping now is a huge problem in the school system. So metal detectors now are not only just for safety, but they're also to screen for anyone vaping, and it also acts as a tremendous deterrent. And now in addition to that, we've included body temperature detection on, on the device. So now you can screen for metal, vaping, and that body temperature detection. The next we're also incorporating now is our own visitor management um, software. We're now integrating it with our devices. So when you approach a, a facility, um, you know, Esteban was mentioning what you do when you've got registered users. Of course, you want your, your employee uh, to be able to, you know, check in and then uh, be denied access, allowed access based on uh, acceptable temperature range. But what do you do with all the visitors? So now we've incorporated our device. It's called now the ZK VAMS Safeguard Tablet. And that's now integrated with ZK VAMS, which is our visitor authentication and management system. 
Whereas typical visitor management systems, you might have a sign-in sheet, or you might have a phone with your QR code. However, now we're additionally ensuring that company, that when you receive a visitor, not only are they saying who they claim to be by checking their identification, we're also now ensuring that that person has acceptable body temperature or they won't be allowed into the facility. So we've taken the very best of visitor management. Also, if you have uh, school clients, we also have integration with the sex offenders database. We also can ensure that, uh, um, you know, that, that there's a, a, an acceptable list, there's a denied list. So we have all the best of uh, visitor management, and now in addition to that, body temperature recognition. And I emphasize that this is nothing new at ZK Techo. We've already been introducing all these products, all these software applications. We simply just added a thermal sensor to further complement it. Whereas many companies out there, they're brand new, they're just jumping on the bandwagon, and they're trying to capitalize on all this fear, uncertainty, and doubt that COVID-19 is, uh, you know, is creating. So I, I, I impress upon all of you, please do your homework. Understand the company behind the products, because you need that company to stand behind you. It's not just a matter of getting a cheap product and having all those surprises. Oh, you didn't tell me I needed face recognition. Oh, I didn't know I needed a video recorder. Oh, I didn't know I needed to monitor this. You don't want to have all those surprises. With ZK Checo, it's a standalone, all-in-one solution that doesn't require all these other peripherals. And now we're building upon the devices by including access control software and now visitor management software. In addition to having um, ZK's uh, ZK Biosecurity software, which is a very, very powerful software application that we do encourage you to utilize with these devices, but of course we realize that many of you will have very large Fortune 1000 companies that have an existing uh, access control infrastructure, and that's no issue. Currently right now, the devices are being integrated with Lenel OnGuard, Genetech, and AMAX Symmetry software. These are three of the most popular um, access control applications on the market, and we will continue doing additional integrations, but uh, make, you know, have no, 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 no concerns. Um, I just had a very interesting conversation, actually, with one of the world's largest banks, and they were impressing upon me. Most end users really don't know what to do with this technology. They know they need body temperature detection, but you know, how, how will the customers react to it? How will the employees react to it? So the beauty behind a standalone device is you can have this device installed on a pole and simply just have the user get feedback whether or not they have body temperature, and that's the least invasive way to try this technology. And then you can connect an LED, as Esteban demonstrated, and just maybe have a light turn on so that a nearby security guard or security staff can see that the red light went on when someone had a body temperature detection that was unacceptable. And then the next level, of course, is that you can wire it directly to a door or a gate or a turnstile, and now you can actually control access. As you saw with Esteban's presentation, even though Esteban had access rights, the fact he was not wearing a mask and the fact that his body temperature was elevated was an override. So you can connect our device to a, a turnstile or a gate, and then you can take it the next step, you can connect it to your existing access control system. Today, currently, it's either Linnell, Genetech, or AMAG, or any other. So I, 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 I encourage you all, you want to get this device in your customer's hand as quickly as possible, but then you don't have to worry about taking large, giant steps. Take baby steps. And, You'll soon learn how that customer prefers to integrate that into their uh, into their system. Last question we often receive is, you know, do we support OSDP? And uh, currently we are working on this. It should not uh, take that much time. I have every bit of confidence because other ZK Checo access control readers already have OSDP. Our panels already have OSDP. We are one of the original vendors working with the Security Industry Association, amongst others. That, uh, to really, really promote the use of uh, OSDP. We've been working with um, HID and Mercury and many other leaders. So OSDP is definitely a direction that we're going to be uh, um, incorporating to all our devices, including the speed face readers. So with that, um, I'd like to thank you all. I know we covered a lot of information. I think most importantly, bear in mind, we know there's a lot of noise out there with body temperature detection. And there'll be a lot of vendors just racing to the market, making all these crazy claims. Uh, I encourage you all, please research the company behind those devices. If any of those devices say that they prevent COVID-19, they prevent uh, the spread of infection, 
I assure you that the FDA, ISO, and many other governing bodies will be issuing fines and there will be lawsuits soon after that. Do not get involved with companies that claim medical benefits. This is not a medical device. I also encourage you to consider this is not a surveillance application. Finding out who has elevated body temperature after they've already breached your perimeter security and are already among the, the population, whether it's um, in a restaurant, a ball game, or in the office, surveillance is not the solution. This is an access control solution. And lastly, you don't necessarily need to tie down your doors if someone doesn't have elevated body temperature. You can simply put it on a stand and let the people self-regulate themselves, then take it to the next level where elevated body temperature triggers an alert, then later perhaps wire it to the turnstile or door, and then ultimately tie it into your back-end access control system. So with that, um, I, Savannah and I, we conclude this part of the presentation. Uh, we're open to questions. Uh, we'll, I don't know if we can manage this with 200 people on the line, but we'll do our best. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the questions in the chat. I think that'll be easier so we don't have everybody just kind of talking over each other. So I'm just going to run through, take a look at some of these questions, and I'll be able to uh, kind of answer correctly what, uh, sorry, answer what uh, is relevant here. So I see one, uh, putting your palm up to the device is only for temperature reading, or is there another function? Right now, it's just palm uh, verification, palm recognition. We are looking into integrating palm temperature, but right now the temperature is taken from points in the forehead as well as the eye and te uh, tear ducts. Is the body temperature alerted in the uh, alert email? No, we do not. Uh, we do not send out what that person's temperature is. That will be in the software itself for the reporting. For someone can follow up on that. This just solely sends a notification that there was uh, an alert. Uh, integration that uh, I think we covered already. Is this device connected to the network for administration or is it locally programmed? It can be done both. So this is a standalone reader or it can be networked back to our software. Can the facial palm templates be shared between devices? Yes, when connected to our software you can manage all your personnel and which devices and templates they're allowed to uh, can be pushed out to it. Can the temp setting be set remotely? Yes, it can be done through the software. Uh, since you are adding some features later, will software upgrades be available if sold before a feature is added? Uh, yes, upgrades and firmware upgrades will be free. Uh, are the walkthrough metal detectors TSA approved? No, they are currently not. Lead time on these devices, uh, please contact your our MRs, our reps and salesmen throughout the country uh, for anything, but right now we're looking at about six weeks. What happens when you come in from outside in cold weather? So this reader is simply only taking your body temperature at that moment in time that you are being, that, that you present yourself. So in order to work with that, you can do your temperature deviations to be a little cooler or a little warmer, and also we suggest uh, different, depending on where you are, you would need to adjust for that. Uh, what is the enrollment process? You can be enrolled on the software or at the reader itself, or if you need to, you can also do, um, you can enroll using our biosecurity mobile app, which has a link, and you can enroll in the face, which would then send out to our software. Uh, what version of software is this? This is V5000. This is currently not on the website. We're still doing some minor